So in this video we're going to look at the genetic code and the basis for the genetic code. So you should be reasonably familiar with the genetic code. Uh, genetic code of the organism is a sequence of bases along its DNA. It's got thousands of sections which are called genes or cistrons. So each gene, as you probably remember, codes for a specific amino acid, so a specific polypeptide. So in the image here that we've got a sequence of bases the specific order of that forms the a single gene now they could be thousands more bases they vary in size massively and that gene that we've got there could be the protein that carries out a specific function or, or whatever all the polypeptides are made from amino acids so this sequence of bases must therefore put the amino acids in the right order now the genetic code is what's classed as universal that means the same sequence of the bases codes for the same amino acids in all organisms. So if it's a or if it's an amino acid in let's say if it's serine in a human being, it's serine in a cabbage, it's serine in a rabbit or a cat. Now the triplet code is based on the four bases of DNA and there's some changes when we look at mRNA but if we're focusing on the DNA triplet code there are four bases now they code for 20 amino acids so if we kind of do a little bit of mass to figure out what the basis of the genetic code could be if we only use one base to code for the amino acids that means we would have the bases A, C, G and T and that would only give us 40, four, sorry, four different combinations so four possible amino acids so we know it's not that if we had two bases, that means we could have A, C, G, T, A, C, G, T. So four times four, and that would give us 16 possible amino acids. Now we know that it can't be that either because there are 20 amino acids. If we have three bases, that's four combinations times four times four. So 64 total combinations, which is significantly more than the 20 amino acids. Now this is the process by um, which the amino acids are placed along the triplet code. However, this triplet code um, is what's called degenerate. So while there are 64 possible combinations, it means that some amino acids are coded for by more than one triplet. So um, on the next slide, I'll show you a little bit of information that will help to break that down. But despite the fact there are 64 possible combinations, we only end up with two, 20 different amino acids. <clears throat> Now the reason for that is if we put in a triplet code we find that this codes for this amino acid. Now if we look at all of the amino acids we can see all of the different codons that they might possibly have. So if we look at leucine, leucine is coded for by the following six combinations. So UUA, UUG, CUU, CUC, CUA, CUG. So what this essentially tells us is that we've reduced the amount of potential 64 possibilities down to 58. And there are others that have multiple and there are some that only have single um, different codes for that. So this is, the, um, this is what we mean by a degenerate code. One amino acid can be, can be coded for by multiple um, codons. This one here, this stop, is not actually an amino acid. That is when we look at the transcription translation process, essentially says that's the end of your gene. And that will cause the translation to stop and the gene is complete and the process ends. So there are three here that are capable of stopping the translation. So that means that there are 61 which can code in a degenerate way for a range of amino acids, 20 total.